the way we started uh, this was uh, we experienced the problem of uh, running and scaling a professional service business ourselves right uh, we grappled with the complexities of running our day to day activities efficiently Uh, the costs were high uh, and they were ag- uh, aggravatingly inconsistent with the tipping saas costs in the market so the saas mm-hmm. costs were going down but the tools that are available to the uh, small businesses you know they're going up so the, the challenges uh, so the some of the challenges that we faced uh, before we started this was uh, uh, we observed a phenomenon of software fatigue uh, uh, for the small businesses So it seems like the the businesses have become uh, you know digital octopuses wherein you know they are trying to juggle multiple tools to accomplish the daily tasks Hi guys welcome back to our YouTube channel I hope you all are doing good this is the third episode of our looking beyond fan series in this series we talk to founders and tech leaders who took the leap to start their own game changing companies after working in the tech industry for some time uh, we will be deep diving into various aspects of their lives uh, what's special about this well we're going to be featuring founders who startups are on the brink of shaking things up in the future so you're going to get unfiltered advice and insights so do make sure that you're with us till the end of the podcast for some eye opening discussions and advice uh, especially if you are a tech enthusiast but before moving forward take a moment to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you are always notified on all our upcoming videos and uh, now without wasting any more time let's let's jump into the session uh, today we have bharat with us bharat is the co-founder of a vc funded startup called coon uh, coon offers an advanced work os for businesses such as accounting legal marketing and freelancing uh, the company is based out of san francisco right uh, yes Uh, okay the company is based out of san francisco uh, it was a part of yc summer batch of 2022 uh, to know more about it in detail how it got started how was the experience so far let's welcome bharat uh, thank you bharat for taking out time to do this with us can you quickly introduce yourself for our viewers yeah ishwani uh, yeah okay glad to be here uh, my name is bharat um Uh, I graduated in electrical engineering from iit madras uh, in 2012 uh, since then I have worked with some startups uh, in India. I have co-founded a startup called Adaptive Road Team in the US, where uh, we uh, uh, we enable the companies manage their strategy and OKRs using using Slack bots. Uh, thereafter, I was the founding engineer at a company uh, at a US tech company called Realtek, where uh, I led the engineering team uh, to build uh, to build a scalable healthcare claims insurance engine. And after that, you know, moved back to India uh, last year and have been working on phones since then. Okay, great. Uh, so, Bharat, uh, I have given a little bit about uh, like a brief introduction of Cone, but can you, like, as a founder, tell our viewers exactly what Cone does and what was yes. the problem <clears throat> that you wanted to solve for that you started this company? Yes. So, uh, Cone, uh, we are building a software suite to streamline how a professional services business works, operate, uh, like accountants, bookkeepers, uh, freelancers, etc. So, it's designed to manage uh, work. Amplify revenue uh, growth and cultivate uh, meaningful client relationships. Uh, our suite consists of two products. So, first is a, a proposals to payment system that enables customers, uh, our customers, to create uh, captivating personalized uh, proposals uh, uh, and collect these signatures, and also collect the payments effortlessly all under one roof. And this feature, this tool, is free. Our second offering is a work management solution. Uh, Uh, which takes away the complexity out of managing projects, uh, increases operational efficiency. Imagine executing, uh, you know, tasks faster and more accurately. So thereby freeing the time to focus more on the uh, business growth strategies rather than the administrative work. Right. So okay. this is exactly what our work management offers. Uh, hmm. But so our suit is not just about the work and transactions. So we do understand value. Uh, we understand and value. uh meaningful relationships so our branded client portals ensure transparency uh, and open communications uh, uh, with their clients uh, it encourages trust and uh, uh ensures lasting client partnerships which is a crucial element of any successful business okay. and uh, as an so our software is, isn't just a set of tools it's a unified platform that integrates all essential functions Uh, to mm-hmm. make the daily operations for a business a breeze while uh, accelerating their uh, their decision making process. Hmm. 
Okay, understood. Uh, so Bharat, it's been more than a year for you that you founded this company and it's been running now. Can you share some of the challenges that you guys have faced so far and how you resolved them? Yeah. So uh, before, uh, yes, uh, the going on into challenges, right? So I think um, the way we started uh, this was uh, we experienced the problem of uh, running and scaling a professional service businesses ourselves, right? Uh, we grappled with the complexities of running our day-to-day activities efficiently. Mm-hmm. Uh, the costs were high uh, and they were ag- uh, aggravatingly inconsistent with the tipping SaaS costs in the market. So the SaaS mm-hmm. costs were going down, but the tools that are available to the uh, small businesses, you know, they're going up. So the, the challenges, uh, so the, some of the challenges that we faced uh, before we started this was um, uh, we observed a phenomenon of software fatigue uh, uh, for the small businesses. So it seems like the, the businesses have become, uh, you know, digital octopuses, wherein, you know, they are trying to juggle multiple tools to accomplish the daily tasks. Uh, creating proposals required one software, obtaining new signatures required another, task management, client communication, document management, all these, you know, each aspect of operations needed different solutions. So the image was clear, the businesses were confined by a fragmented software ecosystem. So uh, these were some of the challenges that we faced ourselves before we actually started this, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, now coming back to actually like, you know, uh, okay, so once we decided on this, uh, like, you know, so the challenges that we have observed, so, uh, you know, even okay, at the startup and also uh, in the startups which you know which are uh, which I have worked with earlier and also by observing others right so the some of the uh, 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 you know uh, the challenges uh, you know that we usually, that we usually try to avoid is uh, uh, first is you know uh, we all I mean we should always uh, uh, be aware of the build it and then they'll come trap so many okay. aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, they fall into this trap of starting their, starting to build their product or service without even first identifying potential paying customers. Hmm. You know, they just dive into the development, assuming that uh, people will automatically flock uh, to buy hmm. what uh, you know what they are actually working on. So it's hmm. very critical to evaluate and validate the market demand and ensure that you know you have ready to pay customers before you actually you know start the work. Hmm. Um, now one of the, uh, the other challenges that the startups usually encounter is to build uh, is you know they you know they build a weak founding team. Hmm. Uh, neglecting the importance of building a strong founding team is a common pitfall in many of the startups, right? So uh, you have to look for individuals with complementary skills, uh, diverse uh, perspectives, but with a sh- uh, with a common shared commitment towards the startup's uh, success. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, the other challenge that uh, that uh, that we have seen uh, in across the startups is not recognizing when to adapt to the company's direction, right? Mm-hmm. So you need to know when to uh, when to change the strategy and when to change the direction. We have to mm-hmm. have a clear vision, but you should avoid rigidly sticking to the original plan because you know based on the learnings that you get from the market, you might have to steer in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, the other uh, the other challenge that uh, that I think um, is common across it, uh, and, uh, many startups is uh, the funding mirage, wherein you know uh, a lot of founders they prioritize uh, trying to raise funds rather than trying to solve the problems of the customers. Hmm. Uh, so for the long term success, I think the startup should focus on uh, uh, the value creation uh, and hmm. the sustainability rather than uh, having to brag about the funds. Hmm. That is quite interesting, Bharat. Uh, so let's move to the next question. Uh, you founded this company last year only, right? And uh, mm-hmm. last year, in, in the first year itself, you got accepted by YC. So can mm-hmm. you tell a little bit about that whole experience? How was it and what were some key learnings for you as a founder there? Yes, so I think uh, uh, um, accepted, uh, getting accepted into the Y Combinator was great. Uh, we actually learned some. We, I mean, we learned a lot. Uh, you know, in, uh, in in the course of the three months that we were there, okay, we learned a lot. So, the main philosophy of YC is make something people want. Right? Mm-hmm. So they heavily focus on product development, uh, customer interactions, and uh, they have this very uh, interesting goal, which is a consistent weekly growth of at least seven percent. So, you know, mm-hmm. so that is their goal. that's the goal that they set. So, 
the role of yc is to steer the startup in the right direction uh, and assist with fundraising right uh, but the one thing that we have learned i think uh, i mean uh, we knew it earlier but then you know uh, but then you know having to experience it first hand is actually much more powerful yc doesn't hand hold or babysit startups okay. right you know but they provide you with access to enormous uh, network of exceptional founders you know experienced partners and mm-hmm. yc itself is a platform for raising funds right mm-hmm. so it's up to the founders to make the most use of these resources mm-hmm. um and so over the course of uh, the time that we were there um uh YC is actually what you make of it, hmm. right? Um, okay. So when I say that, you know, uh, you know, they don't ask you to do a certain thing. You know, they don't say, okay, hey, you have, okay, if you do this in this way, you know, you are going to get X customers, or you know, or you are going to be successful. You know, you know, they don't do that. No, it's entirely hmm. up to the founders, you know, to make use of the resources that they give, uh, uh, and uh, the work is completely on the founders itself. You know, the YC gives all, all the resources and. The, platform mm-hmm. and access to the other YC companies as well um mm-hmm. overall it was actually a stressful experience <laughs> it wasn't mm-hmm. i mean it was a lean back experience at all because you're dropped in a in amongst a bunch of smart and accomplished people uh, mm-hmm. who are sprinting as fast as possible towards the same mo day that everyone's goal is right mm-hmm. um so yeah so okay i mean it was stressful i think uh, uh, but you know so uh, in the uh, during the period you know so i think we have done, i mean we have got the tech quite uh, uh, quite an amount of work and we also uh, got much more clarity on what mm-hmm. or on what we want to be doing right um uh, the another learning that we had was uh, uh, at times their advice seems unusual right okay Uh, but it often holds merit and is generally accurate because they have observed like you know, each uh, YC batch has around uh, on an average it has 300 startups right so in a year they are you know uh, the uh, the two batches consists of a uh, 600 startups in a year so imagine you know, they have been doing this for so many years right so hmm. uh, they have observed hundreds of startups facing similar challenges and they share their insights and uh, advice based on pattern matching Right, hmm. a major value of YC comes from the role of being an advisor or a coach, and they try to push back against founder psychology or, or hmm. thinking trap. So, one of these is okay. Uh, you know, some people want to just you know go uh, uh, you know do a marketing campaign without even having the product or without even you know trying to test it with a small set of customers to see you know if it's actually working or do you have uh, or do you have to actually change it, right? So. Hmm. Um, they have seen this working uh, sorry they have seen these mistakes with others and then you know they try to uh, 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 give us the feedback based on that uh, mm-hmm. and they do so this often that you know they keep repeating the same advice because you know not everyone would uh, you know would take the advice the first time but you know mm-hmm. uh, but you know, it's really important that you know uh, they repeat it uh, you know they repeat it again and again so if you see right so um, mm-hmm. uh, what else over the course of this i mean you know that my experience with this was similar to a college like you know so when okay so even when i was in college they mm-hmm. don't give, i mean they don't ask you to do anything you know so you have all the resources with you and you are with a bunch of smart people and it's up to you to to utilize those resources you know um you can attend every meeting you you also need not attend every meeting you know, even if you don't attend any meeting you know no one is going to ask you right uh you can mm-hmm. average every resources they have and you can work really hard to be successful hmm interesting <laughs> so uh bharat why uh, combinator is such a popular thing among up and coming entrepreneurs right and it has its own brand value uh but now after being a part of uh, their batch summer uh, last year right can you tell some of the misconceptions that people have about them uh that you would like to share with us yes so uh the first misconception is the same as we used to have in our college you're like you know once you're in you're there hmm. like you know so once you get into it it's all done you know okay everything is going to be nice green okay you don't have to hmm. do any work but you know that's a big misconception the uh, getting access into yc is you know okay it is in the end goal it is just the first step the actual hmm. work you know starts actually there hmm. um the other misconception is why uh, people say yc advice will inspire you because you know they are partners you know they are well known uh, partners around the world so you know they that ways will inspire you but the mm-hmm. reality is uh, the partners often speak very straight forward and they are usually blunt 
like you know so okay. there's no fluff in there you know they speak mm-hmm. it straight you know i mean they are straight shooters uh, initially we were a bit taken aback like, hey okay that was a bit uncalled for but then we 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 understood their intent so the intent is is they genuinely wish to help you improve right okay. uh most conversations uh, you know i had with vice partners were consistent of straightforward practical advice uh so it was good like you know so mm-hmm. i mean it also made us realize the things and the other is uh, it's going to be fun uh mm-hmm. it's not so it's uh, i mean as i was saying earlier so it was stressful uh, it's not a laid back experience at all um uh their intense customer centric focus uh may seem frustrating at times you know especially when you want to discuss you know other parts of your venture but mm-hmm. it is for a reason right uh mm-hmm. their unwavering attention towards uh, uh, the customers who help you develop a superior product i think that is one of the values uh, uh that uh that wise gives hmm so was the overall experience worth it oh yeah it's totally worth it so um uh the worthiness can be uh decided on few things so okay so firstly if we talk about the benefits of being in yc right so mm. yc provides a fundraising platform it's a global well known platform you know that uh, a lot of investors are interested in, mm. right uh yc gives it gives you access to uh you know their founders partners and also some very valuable resources and of course the money you know you cannot down play the money so right now they invest uh, they invest fan that came to the startup right hmm. it's not a small money you know it's a good amount of money um hmm. so as i mean as with everything is you know, i mean as with everything in life like vice is a trade off because you know you know i mean you get the money you know you you have to give away something uh, to them right so this worthiness can be evaluated on what vice gives you and what uh, and what you trade off in return right um you know uh you know some believe that the exposure and the potential interest that you get uh during the mo day uh, that will serve as adequate compensation for the equity wise it takes uh and as a founder you have to evaluate you know uh, okay so i mean is it you know is it is yc worth for you uh hmm. for a first time founder it's totally worth it right hmm. uh because you know they give you a lot of advice and you know you have someone to to uh to kind of verify everything that you do like especially when it comes to administrative documents uh, uh you know there is uh, IC itself has lawyers uh, who will read all that for you so it makes a lot of uh, you know for a first time founder you know it makes everything totally so it's completely worth it uh, if you are an experienced founder you know you might want to evaluate because you know you might know a lot of this advice already but uh, you might want to access the vast YC network like say for example if you are working on developer tool right mm-hmm. yc has a really vast network of yc startups you know so each of those uh, each of the startups can actually be your potential customer right so yeah so it's a, i mean so i mean uh, you have to evaluate um if you know so is it okay if you want to get access to those customers so then you know it you know it uh, it would be worth it right but mm-hmm. i have seen many return founders in yc so who apply for yc again and then they they uh, they be part of the program and a lot of them they want to like you know so even uh, as we hear the feedback from them you know a lot of them you know they uh, they uh, they really have a good experience and then they say mm-hmm. hey you know what okay if i ever wanted uh, to start again uh, i would consider my combinator okay. and the comparison can also be in the i mean along the lines of you know is is the alternative to yc worth it right you know mm-hmm. uh, so so uh, for for a lot of companies the alternative is is to raise nothing or bootstrap it right mm-hmm. um so again so in a, okay it's all you know as a founder you know you have to evaluate this um uh, and see that you know if you think you know you will get benefit from it but in, in our case you know, it was comp- uh, i mean we we feel i mean we believe that you know it was totally worth it Hmm. Understood. That is great to know. Uh, so let's move to the next question, uh, Bharat. Uh, you did your B Tech in 2012, right? Uh, that was from IIT mm-hmm. Madras, and since then mm-hmm. you've been working. You worked as a software engineer. You also ran your company. So you mm-hmm. uh, have had the best of both worlds. You have worked as an employee and as an employer mm-hmm. as well. So if you mm-hmm. had to share some key, you know, characteristics that you look for in engineers while hiring, what mm-hmm. would that be? Like if you can share those with us. Yes so uh we uh we believe in the the lean methodologies when it comes to uh teams and hiring hmm. so uh 
we do a differentiation of uh, engineers you know there is a 1x engineer there is a 10x engineer and there is a 100x engineer right mm. so um we believe that great engineers work lo- uh, they love working with other great engineers so we as you know when we are uh, when we are hiring we are looking for an x engineer like you know so that you know uh, so any um, any additional people we get you know they would also love working with the existing team uh so mm-hmm. once you uh, so once you start to hire engineers to create this virtuous uh, virtuous cycle where you know any new engineers that come you know they you know they would be glad to be working with a group of uh, smart engineers you know, which are you know, mm-hmm. okay who are already in the team so to do the evaluation of uh, you know such engineers right so uh, so i think these days uh, assessing candidates technical abilities is very easy you know you have a bunch of tools uh, out there um that will help you to analyze that um but apart from the technical abilities you know we are uh, there are some other qualities as well so called a b c d e f uh, of a technical interview so that that is uh, uh, agility uh, brains communication drive empathy and fit hmm. so these are uh, these are usually some of the characteristics uh, that we usually look for you know when we are actually hiring engineers Okay, great. Uh, that is insightful to know, Bharat. Uh, so we also run an online bootcamp, right? That teaches students coding and analytics, and we get students from all sorts of college, be it, be it from tier three and tier one as well. And the whole point of this podcast is to bring on uh, you know founders and tech leaders who have themselves done it in the industry, and now they're building products from the scratch, right? So if there is any sort of advice, you know, in terms of how students need to change their mindset about having a career in software development. what that advice would be according to you yeah so i think um, uh, i mean uh, i mean the students will get a lot of this advice like uh, yeah i mean i would assume that you know, i mean would get a lot of um, a lot of advice from a lot of people um, mm-hmm. but uh, in the scenario that we are in right now where the the technological landscape is shifting very rapidly mm-hmm. uh, uh, so you know there are like like you know, two so at least two areas where i think uh, i think even okay even me like you know, even myself you know i try to improve on an everyday basis and uh, i think it's applicable to everyone it's applicable to software engineers you know it's applicable to everyone so it's especially applicable to software engineers because of the rapid changes that are happening so mm-hmm. the first one is you should know how to think not just what to know mm-hmm. because you have a trove of information that is available at your fingertips hmm. right so being smart is not about acquiring knowledge because acquiring knowledge is very easy these days hmm. but it's rather about understanding how to use that knowledge effectively hmm. right so you have to engage in strategic thinking and not just information gathering right hmm. so once you have that information you know how can we how can we utilize that uh, uh, to solve the task at your hand right mm-hmm. so that is more important these days because uh, i mean it used to be the earlier case that you know I, i mean even acquiring that knowledge was a bit challenging because you know not, because you know not everyone had access to everything but you know these days you know it's just super easy to get the knowledge so you know mm-hmm. so uh, you know so so now the step is okay so now you you have to know how to use that knowledge mm-hmm. uh, the other is uh, you have to adopt a growth uh, a growth mindset um uh you have to embrace the concept of continuous learning because mm-hmm. that is the only thing that will keep you ahead of the competition pieces because you know what you learn today might be uh, you know obsolete in a year from now right mm-hmm. so you have to con- uh, you, you have to keep continuously learning um, and you have to so it's important to understand that your skills and intellect can be expanded through dedication persistence So I think these uh, you know these are some of the some of the things that you know, that I do follow that you know I would also advocate in everyone else to follow because you know uh, in there even in the case of software engineering uh, there are going to be a lot of changes happening and there are going to be a lot more happening you know even in the future so uh, you know these uh, so I think in you know, everyone has to you know keep uh, uh, at least you know embrace these two things and then you know start to think strategically uh, and uh, always learn always be learning that's fair piece of advice bharat uh, so my next question is uh, basically so you are a developer uh, 
you've been working in this field for 10 plus years now right and you must have noticed a lot of things change in the last decade a lot of new technologies coming in and many more have already gone obsolete right so mm-hmm. how in your opinion uh, software developers can navigate the landscape of ai and llms like chat gpt to their benefit yeah so um yeah so these days uh, the ai and llms are undeniably reshaping the technology domain of they are also reshaping others as well but uh, i think they are uh, more rapidly reshaping the technology domain uh, so there was an interesting question that everyone asks okay uh, will ai take over my job right uh, so i think that you know uh, at least you know from the perspective of software engineering uh, uh, you won't be replaced by ai but you might be replaced by someone who is using ai to do the to to get the job done right mm-hmm. so you have to adapt and grow with these shifts that are happening in the software development mm-hmm. uh, for example if you take a github copilot right mm-hmm. so what uh, earlier what used to take days and weeks to write some code like you know you know people used to look for these efficient ways and we are you know they used to look for the style uh, style patterns you know different languages etc etc right so with with github with github copilot you, know, you just go into the ide and then you say okay hey, uh, okay write me the most efficient sorting algorithm example you know in mm-hmm. golang example it will automatically generate the code for you mm-hmm. right so it's so that so ha- having to uh, know how to implement a certain thing is no longer a barrier so uh, mm-hmm. so it's no longer like a moat so earlier it used to be but you know it's no longer the case Uh, so, familiarizing yourself with such tools and frame uh, and frameworks can significantly improve the productivity, and it ensures that you stay ahead of. Uh, you, uh, I mean, you stay competitive in this evolve uh, in this evolving uh, in this evolving landscape. But mm-hmm. at the same time, adapting to this new era doesn't mean the human element of coding is lost. Right. Mm. Uh, in fact, it will emphasize uh, the importance of creativity, uh, problem-solving abilities, and strategic thinking, which are irreplaceable human capabilities. So mm. you just have to, you know, embrace this change and welcome yourself to the new uh, future of coding. That is great. That is a valid piece of advice, Bharat. So now let's uh, move on to the last segment of this podcast. I am going to be doing a small rapid fire with you. Okay, it will have just three questions, and you just have to tell me whatever comes up to your mind. Okay, so the first question is uh, the best book that you've ever read so far that has like inspired you the most. Okay, uh, this might not be the best, but uh, this. has inspired me and i still keep up playing a lot of techniques from this uh that is the uh, the lean startup by eric ries um okay so that book it gives a new approach to uh, to a business and uh, a set of techniques for ensuring uh, the success of a startup uh, okay. uh so the uh, the lean startup methodology uh, it uh, advocates shorter product development cycles Uh, hmm. and adopting a combination of of, of business hypothesis given experimentation and validated learning so their concept is sorry uh, you know uh, they have this concept of build measure learn right so you build okay. the product and then you measure and then you gather the data and then once you gather the data okay you learn based on that so this is so this results in a feedback loop right hmm. so uh, you know the book has a strategies you know how to reduce the time for uh, you know to uh, to get that feedback and then continuously improve right uh, mm-hmm. it also uh, has uh, has techniques to achieve all this uh, with uh, with with a very small set of resources right um, okay. and uh, so this is also the one of the modes i see in the in the current scenario wherein what you st- earlier what used to take a large team uh, to develop something uh, mm-hmm. these days it just takes a really small team uh, and a and a sh- much shorter time uh, to get to the same result that's just because of you know ev- uh, all uh, the evolution that has happened in the last few years okay understood so my next question is uh, who is your favorite founder the most favorite founder that whom you look up to the most and who has helped you uh, you know in building your own company also yes so uh, there are actually uh, uh, there are few okay so some have revolutionary ideas um, you know uh uh some you know 
uh, some have the best design ideas but uh, in my view i think uh, so the one uh, the one person who who uh, whom whom i find inspiring is jack ma uh, who mm-hmm. is the founder of alibaba Hmm. uh he is he, he he started as an english teacher and he built alibaba which is one of the largest e-commerce companies uh hmm. despite encountering numerous uh, numerous rejections and obstacles early in uh, in his career uh he uh, he persevered and he he stressed the importance of resilience to you know to other startup founders so hmm. with so his story is that you know regardless of your background or past failures with persistence hmm. and hard work uh, you can achieve success Okay, great to know. Uh, so, one last question that we will end this. Uh, what is that one tech trend that you're most excited about? You can name any, like uh, <laughs> the most favorite of yours. Yeah. So, the, yeah. So, the excited is uh, I mean, uh, uh, that's the uh, the advancements of the uh, the uh, the AGI that we are seeing these days. Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, uh, that's going to have. So the, um, uh, that's going to have, uh, have, have okay, a lot of implications and um, a lot of uh, uh, industries. Uh, you know, uh, they would get disrupted. So, uh, and uh, I mean, we are a bit excited because you know we are kind of riding the wave. So, um, uh, it you know it could open uh, it could open up a lot of possibilities for us. Uh, you know, uh, to drive innovation. uh uh so that is one uh, one area that i'm uh, i'm i'm very excited about okay great so that was it bharat these are the questions i had in mind thank you so much again for taking out time to do this with us i really hope people sure. watching this will find it extremely insightful and take the lessons and apply in their lives so yeah thank you so much yeah yes ma'am thank you so much That is it for today's video guys I hope you all found it extremely insightful with Bharat if you are also interested in learning coding just go to our website and take the eligibility test the test will definitely help you in identifying which course is best for you be it one stack or java full stack both the courses have amazing instructors and mentors to help you throughout your journey so if you are interested just click on the link provided in the description below and take the test and if you guys are new to the channel then don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you're always notified on all our upcoming videos and what kind of videos do you want to see in future what kind of questions do you want to ask our founders in the next segment do let us know in the comment section below and we will see you in the next one thank you so much